people, it is April 15th, 2024. This is the Rubin Report. I'm Dave Rubin. Yes, that's right. It is tax day. So you're getting chill Dave Rubin in his defund the IRS t-shirt, which you, ladies and gentlemen, can get yourself at daverubin.store. That's right. I hope, well, I guess I hope that you've paid your taxes. I don't want you to get any trouble into any trouble with the authorities or anything. It's an odd day in America where we give the money that we've earned, that we've you know, bought things and paid sales tax on or property tax throughout the year or payroll tax, all sorts of taxes on different things. And then uh, you also have to give the government income tax. The federal government wants to take a certain percentage of your money that you've earned and what they do with it is unclear to me. Uh, but that's what's happening today. So that's right, defund the IRS. You can get the official Rubin Report shirt at daverubin.store. As always, guys, we are live streaming on Rumble, on Locals and on YouTube. Share, subscribe, tap that notification bell. Post game show, rubinreport.locals.com and you can help keep us completely independent by throwing in a couple bucks if you so see fit. If not, we'll still do the show. So there you go. Um, it was an interesting weekend in that uh, World War III almost kicked off. I don't know if you heard about that. We got pretty damn close, which is why we didn't have a cold open for you today. Cause it was like, well, we almost had World War III. How do we, how do we just throw the people back into the madness? We thought just coming to me here would be a better way of doing it. Uh, but fortunately we did not have uh, the spark of World War III, although it feels like the embers are kind of out there. And that's really going to be the backdrop of today's show, because until we get some of the, uh, let's say, political confusion uh, that many people are having right now, until we can get some of that sorted out so that people will vote the right way, so that some of the liberals waking up will start actually voting for the people that will defend their liberal values. Remember that Dave Rubin guy a couple of years ago defending my liberal values has become a conservative position? Until more and more people see that, uh, we're gonna keep voting in people that will keep getting us closer to World War III, that will not understand the basic premise of deterrence, which is like foreign policy 101. We'll have people who will uh, let everybody in through the border and have your son chop his wang off and a whole bunch more. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, the slow motion conservative. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about, Bill Maher, because he had a couple interesting moments on real time on Friday where he's getting right there. And I know, I know every Monday when we cover Bill Maher stuff, because the show's on Friday night, so we cover it on Monday. I see my emails, I see the tweets, I see the YouTube comments and the Rumble comments, and everyone goes, Dave, Bill's never going to get there. Stop talking about him. He's never going to get there. But as I always say, he represents a certain set of people. Uh, that are getting there. And we can take slow motion conservatives, old school liberals, we can bring them over, uh, but we're gonna have to massage them a little bit on the way. So let's just dive right into it before we get into the uh, World War III stuff, because there's obviously a lot going on with Iran and Israel and how it's leaking into the streets of the United States and, and a whole bunch more, but you'll, you'll see how we do this. Uh, I wanna start with a clip of Bill Maher on Real Time on Friday night. Uh, they were talking about abortion, and Bill, who is pro-choice, uh, actually made some interesting sort of pro-life arguments. Take a look. None of you believe it's murder. You know, that's why I don't understand the 15-week thing. Or the Trump's plan is, let's leave it to the states. You mean, so killing babies is okay in some states? Like, I can respect the, the absolutist position. I really can't. I, I, I scold the left on when they say, oh, you know what? They just hate women, people who aren't pro-life, they, pro-choice. They just, they don't hate women. They just made that up. They think it's murder. And it kind of is. I'm just okay with that. I am. I, I mean, there's 8 billion people in the world. I'm sorry, we won't miss you. That's my position on that. What? It's quite if, harsh, if, Bill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not is sure that you're not your much. position if you're pro-choice? Okay, so we're gonna show you a couple of clips here, but there, there's a lot there. First off, on one hand, what Bill is saying is what I think what most rational, sane people believe, that abortion is murder. And then everyone who is somewhat pro-choice, you're, you're picking through philosophy or religion or purely secular beliefs, you're picking where you're okay with that, right? So you might say, okay, up to six weeks, heartbeat, then it is a life, let's say, and 
we're not gonna allow abortion. Then there is the more, what I would say is the more moderate position, which is that what most liberals and conservatives believed in the 80s, 90s, even to the early 2000s, that somewhere first trimester, so 12 to 15 weeks, as you guys know, I say it all the time, Florida, the reddest state in the nation, until a year ago had a 15 week abortion ban and nobody was complaining about it. DeSantis decided to go more to the right, I was gonna say extreme, it's not really extreme, but let's say to the right with the six week thing. Uh, but Bill then also says something really interesting. He's saying it is murder. He's saying I am pro-choice, it is murder, and I'm okay with it. That's, that's actually quite an admission, uh, quite an honest moment right there. Uh, because most people say it's not a life, it's not murder, et cetera, et cetera. And yet we know that it is, especially as you get into, I don't know, say four months, five months, six months, seven months, eight months, post-birth post abortion, all of these uh, crazy things. So I think there's something really interesting there because the nuance of, I recognize it to life, I'm still willing to do it. Then, then he says something sort of dark, actually, which is that there's eight billion people on this planet, so he's okay with killing more. I mean, I, I don't see how that, that, that strikes me as like, I think we could probably unpack that bill over some tequila and maybe you'd see that that doesn't really make sense. Just because there's a lot of people here doesn't mean we should be killing other people. Uh, but he was putting this all to the backdrop of how wacky the left has gone, right? Because he's saying just because you're pro-life doesn't mean you hate women, and that's the line that the women that the lefties have been using for all of this time, right? If you if you want any limit on abortion, it's because you hate women, and that's just complete nonsense. As he says, uh, they just completely made that up. Uh, so the question is, when does the left go to? Far. Well, Bill had a little something to say about that. Honestly, Canada, I'm not saying any of this because I enjoy it. I don't because I've always enjoyed you. But I need to cite you as a cautionary tale to help my country. And the moral of that tale is, yes, you can move too far left. And when you do, you wind up pushing the people in the middle to the right. At its worst, Canada is what American voters think happens when there's no one putting a check on extreme wokeness. They say in politics, liberals are the gas pedal and conservatives are the brakes. And I'm generally with the gas pedal, but not if we're driving off a cliff. On the trans issue, America is no ands, ifs, or buts about it absolutely alone in the world now, an outlier country. Last month, England's National Health Service announced that there's not enough evidence to support the safety or clinical effectiveness of puberty blockers for third graders and that they were going to stop fumbling around with children's privates because that's Prince Andrew's job. <laughs> the far left, which always like to use, well, Europe does it. Yeah, no, that doesn't work on this one anymore. <laughs> or on immigration. Sweden opened its borders to over a million and a half immigrants since 2010, and now 20% of its citizens are foreign-born, and its education system is tanking, and it has Europe's highest rate of gangland killings. And one result is that the far-right parties are in the government now there for the first time, to which liberals say blaming immigrants for the rising crime rate is racist. Yeah, but is it true? Of course it's true. It's not a coincidence the quality of life went down after the Somali gangs started a drug turf war using hand grenades. Calling it racist doesn't solve the problem. It hands future elections to someone who will solve the problem and who, I promise, you're not going to like. Okay, so I'm not sure about that last line there. We'll get to that in a second because that's how they always scare you at the end, right? They always will tell you. I mean, this is... Bill's not the only person that does that. Here are all the horrible things that the left is doing, but if you vote for someone on the right, they're gonna be more evil, and I just don't think that works, especially in light of the fact that I think most sane Americans, I'm not talking about TDS people, Trump derangement, derangement syndrome people, and I'm not call, talking about the wacky lefties, most people, I think, now acknowledge things would be a bit better under Donald Trump right now, but it's interesting because here he is, he's giving a concession, and this is what a good liberal does. So this is, this is why I play these clips of Bill all the time, and even if he doesn't get there himself, it's like a, what a true liberal would do is analyze each issue honestly, and that actually is what he's doing here. If you look at the abortion one, he's basically saying, it is murder, but I am okay with it. Now, you may not like his conclusion, but he's telling you what he thinks and why he thinks it, right? Now on these other issues that he's talking about there, uh, immigration, it's like, okay, you can let in all of these people, but then the social services start 
collapsing and you're, if you're a good liberal, if you're a good lefty, you like those social services, right? That's one thing that you really like. And you know, you start having more crime and drugs and everything else. We start seeing that multiculturalism doesn't quite work. He also relates this to the trans thing and then we know that the puberty blockers for kids and everything else, that Europe is actually reversing on that. So the point is all of the things that the lefties vote in ultimately end up destroying everything and he's trying to wake people up to it. Now the question is if you're one of the people that agrees, if you were watching that, and I think I have no doubt that many of you watching that there were agreeing with a lot of the things Bill says. Well then the question is in this crazed two party situation that we're in right now, which way are you going to vote? I actually think many of the, the liberals who get it will end up voting for RFK. Uh, which ultimately helps Donald Trump, which from, from where I sit would be completely fine. But I wanna show you one other thing because at the end there when he was talking about Sweden and he talks about these European countries, we are right now replicating all of the terrible things that the European countries did for a decade. For a decade we saw mass waves of immigration into these countries, right? We saw people come in and not integrate properly. We saw violence go up and drug use go up. And again, the social services collapsing, right? Uh, Angela Merkel, former prime minister of Germany, she says she regrets letting those million people in. Most of the people of France and the UK, as they see what's going on on their streets, are not happy about it. And guess what? As I just said, we're replicating it here in the United States. Uh, this past weekend in Dearborn, Michigan, there were chants of death to America. Bill talked about that. Okay. So that's where we are. Now can I talk about American propaganda? Because there was a rally in Dearborn, Michigan, mm -hmm. to large Muslim population. Uh, chant of death to America. I feel like we've, we've passed something here. You know, I mean, the left has gotten mad at me for many years for talking about Islam. I try not to do it too much because I know it makes them go crazy and I've made my point. But it needs to be talked about now. When you start trying, chanting death to America in America. I mean, I got it, Charlottesville was real bad when they were chanting death to the, what was it, the Jews will not replace us. But on American soil, here's the, the Tarek Bazi is the <clears throat> organizer of this. Uh, this was at the end of Ramadan, International Day of Quds, Al Quds, which was pronounced originally by, he said, this is why Iman Khamenei, that's the Ayatollah Khamenei, Remember him, yep. the Ayatollah Khamenei? He's the good guy now. Uh, Khamenei, he would say to pour all your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Yeah, I heard this before. Not coming from America, but the great chastisement. We will chastise the infidels. But now it's coming from inside America. Sorry, got to talk about this again. He said, we live in one of the rottenest countries that ever existed on earth. It's not just genocide, Joe, that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. No, it doesn't. I like our system. This is America for crying out loud. Well, what about... And there are people who see me say this, oh, he's a conservative now. I'm a conservative. I have not changed. I always liked America and thought death to it was bad. Well, how about... You know, the beauty of that really at the end there is Bill's like, yeah, I, I am a liberal still, so I can't have America collapse because America is good for liberals. What I would say to Bill is that you want to be liberal in the sheets and conservative in the voting booth, right? What you do in the privacy of your own home, do whatever the hell you want, but you better start voting for people that are gonna stop some of this. So all of the Democrats who are now waking up and they're like, wow, you know, they're chanting death to America on our streets and we're gonna show you some video of that in just a second. Uh, you might want to go, okay, enough, enough, enough. But as Jordan Peterson often points out, the left seems unable to figure out when enough is enough. So we're going to show you some of those chants because this thing is not an anomaly and it is not something that is just staying in Europe. It is, it's here. It's just here, which is deeply depressing, but let's talk about meat for a minute. Guys, <laughs> how was that for a segue? I feel like... It, Something happened there. Uh, guys, 60% of U.S. pork production comes from one company owned by the Chinese. And their hogs are given something called ractopamine, which is banned in 160 countries, including China, yet you find it in your grocery aisle every day. Well, there's a better way. I want to tell you guys about Moink. That's Moo plus Oink. 60% of U.S. pork production. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're doubling up on our prompter here. What's going on here? 
You guys know Moo Plus. Oink, Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. Moink farmers farm like our grandparents did, and as a result, Moink meat tastes like it should because the family farm does it better. The Moink difference is a difference you can taste and you can feel good knowing you're helping family farms stay financially independent as well. You choose the meat delivered in every box like ribeyes to chicken breasts to pork chops to salmon fillets and much more. Plus you can cancel anytime. Shark Tank host Kevin O'Leary called Moink's bacon the best bacon he's ever tasted and they guarantee you'll say, oink, oink, I'm just so happy I got Moinked. Keep American farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash Ruben right now. And listeners of this show get two free steaks in your first box. It's the best steak you'll ever taste, but for a limited time, M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Ruben, moinkbox.com slash Ruben. And now back to me. Uh, what's the segue from the Moink box to the people chanting death to America? I'm not exactly sure. So here's some people in Dearborn, Michigan. These are Islamists, jihadists, whatever you want to call them in America, chanting death to America. Enjoy. We've been asked in the past, why are our protests on the International Day of Quds, why are they so anti-America? Why don't we just focus more on Israel and not talk so much about America? Gaza has shown the entire world why these protests are so anti-America. Because it's the United States government that provides the funds for all of the atrocities that we just heard about. And this is why Imam Khomeini, who declared the International Day of Quds, this is why he would say to pour all of your cha all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Malcolm X said, and I quote, we live in one of the rottenest countries that, have ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not Genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Any system that would allow such atrocities and such devilry to, a ha to happen and would support it, such a system does not deserve to exist on God's earth. You could see why a pot-smoking liberal like Bill Maher might not be thrilled that uh, these people are in the United States right now. And this is a problem because as they're chanting death to America, how many people, we don't have to make it about that guy specifically, who has no fear in doing that, by the way, right? He has no fear. He's not going to get in any trouble. Actually, his representative there in Dearborn, Michigan, Rashida Tlaib, believes the same stuff. But we are bringing sectarian and religious violence to our country. If you don't like it, leave. And they never leave. They just want to bring in more people, right? Because they want to destroy the whole thing from inside. But go live with the Ayatollah if you think he's so great. Uh, America is the greatest country to have ever existed on, uh, on the planet Earth. It is the dream of human beings that we could live in some place that would respect our individual rights and our differences and all of those things and give equality and opportunity to everybody. And you think it's the rottenest place on Earth. And that's a problem because you are a foreign invader in this country. That really is where we're at. But it should not surprise us this is, that this is coming out of Dearborn, Michigan, because it is represented by one of the Hamas caucus members, Rashida Tlaib. Uh, and here she is in the halls of Congress, unable to condemn chants of death to America. I don't talk to Fox News. At a rally in your district, people were chanting death to America. Do you condemn? I don't talk to Fox News. But do you condemn chants of death to America? I don't talk to people that use racist tropes. Why can't you just say whether or not you condemn people chanting Fox death to America? Why are you afraid to talk to Fox? Fox News is not, not listen, using racist tropes towards my community is what Fox News is about, and I don't talk to Fox News. Is death to America racist? Is chanting death to America racist? I'm talking about your guys' racist tropes. You know, you guys, are, you guys know exactly what you do. I know you're Islamophobic, but you guys got to go deal with it on your own self. You're not going to use me. I mean, she is a disgusting pig, and that's not racist. Like, she has no right to be in Congress. She shouldn't even be in America. It is not Islamophobic to ask why people in her district are chanting uh, death to America. A phobia, by the way, is an irrational fear. It, would it be an irrational fear for, say, liberals or gays or other minorities to want less 
Islamists in their area. If more of them started coming, would that be an irrational fear? It would be a completely rational fear because they're the least liberal thing, which is why this alliance between the woke leftists and the jihadists will not end well for the gays of Palestine, the gays for Palestine, right? Because Palestine for gays is very different than gays for Palestine. But it, it is not an anomaly. It is a virus that is all over the country. And we better, you know, I keep saying this thing about how in Israel, for all the things they have to deal with, they've become a very serious country, right? They're like, oh, rockets are hitting us constantly and there's people trying to behead our children and all of this stuff. And we have to build iron domes and things out of Star Wars to stop drones from coming in, crazy things. They're a serious country dealing with serious stuff. We're not a very serious country, right? We're not. We better get serious because it feels like we're heading to serious times. Uh, but it's not just Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, here are some Islamists in Chicago over the weekend where they go to class to learn how to chant death to Israel and death to America. What, cl what class is this? What do people, is this, this like, <laughs> well, just watch. So I'm going to teach you a chant in Persian that you can use if you ever encounter those Zionist freaks, whether they be Iranian or whatever, all right? <laughs> now, I don't drink margaritas, but we all know what a margarita is. We all know what a bar is. So you're going to say, Marg Bar. Marg Bar. Marg Bar Israel. 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 Thank you. What does that mean? Oh, so. It has, uh, it has two meanings, depending on the <laughs> It can mean death to or down with. So, can, we get, can we get a Mark Bar Amrita? We can get a Mark Bar Amrita. Yes, we can. Oh. Mark Bar Amrita! Mark Bar Amrita! Mark Bar Amrita! Mark Bar Amrita! These masked, pathetic, jihadist, sympathizing freaks. You use the word freak like you want to see a bunch of freaks in their masks chanting death to America. It is so twisted and sick, but nobody's gonna stop them. When does the left go too far? Nobody's gonna stop them on the left. So it will leave a guy like Bill Maher going, I'm still a liberal, why am I in bed with all of these people? And if you think it just, oh, it's just regulated or it's just relegated to Dearborn, Michigan, a guy standing on a stoop and a couple dozen people chanting, death to America, or it's just a classroom in Chicago where some guy's chanting death to America, Marg Bar. That means ruining the margarita, right? Like ruining the margarita. Uh, well, actually right now, at this very moment, I saw this moment right before we started the show, uh, there are Hamas protesters, and that's exactly what they are because none of them condemn Hamas. They are, I, I would argue, they're just an extension of Hamas. You know, you talk about Hamas's military wing, well, these are, these are their foot soldiers in the West. Uh, they right now are blocking the entrance and exit to Chicago O'Hare Airport, right this moment. <laughs> Masked, again, they're masked because it's all coordinated. They're told what to do. Their brains have been broken. They, they're, they're, they're clone soldiers. If you can understand it, that's what they are. Anyway, that's what's happening in Chicago. Chicago, of course, a blue city and a blue state. And it's like, if you think that that will magically just stop happening, you are very wrong. They, there is, those people should all be arrested. They should all be arrested and there should be zero tolerance. I guarantee you, once they start this shit in Florida, if they have the guts to do it, and by the way, most people are packing here in, in Florida, so they won't, uh, DeSantis will make sure that that is not happening. But let's, let's continue because it's not just Chicago. Their calls for death are across the country right now. Let's go all the way to Bakersfield, California. Uh, here is an unhinged, far-left, woke Islamist. Her name is Reedy Patel. And, uh, well, she's threatening to murder the uh, mayor of Bakersfield and a couple other people. Enjoy. Hi there, my name is Riddhi Patel. I'm here to speak in support of the city council introducing a ceasefire resolution, specifically the one um, United Liberation Front um, has drafted. I don't have faith that you'll do this. You guys are all horrible human beings and Jesus probably would have killed you himself. And the thing is though, 
it's very clear to me as in someone who's been an organizer for the past couple of years that none of you care because you, got, you guys don't care about anything happening in Palestine or any other country where oppression occurs because you don't care about the oppression occurring here. And I understand that you guys are all horrible people, but the thing is, 2,300 people being evicted in the last year, those are votes. And you guys, those are votes to win here in Bakersfield. And while you, you guys parade Gandhi around as a Hindu holiday called Chaitra Navratri it starts off this week, I remind you that these holidays that we practice, that other people in the Global South practice, believe in violent revolution against their oppressors. And I hope one day somebody brings the guillotine and kills all of you mother so regardless of whether you elect people into office, they'll backstab you, they'll let you die, and for that reason, you guys want to criminalize us with metal detectors, we'll see you at your house. We'll murder you. Next speaker, please. Lance, followed by Kev, followed by Valeria. Ms. Patel. Ms. Patel. That was a threat, what you said at the end, and so the officers are going to escort you out and take care of that. Ma'am, the guillotine and the Jesus would murder everybody, and the thing about coming to our house, like we get it, it's California. <laughs> anyway, uh, they did arrest her. I guess. I can't believe it. <laughs> she is in court. Take a look. You guys want to criminalize us with metal detectors? We'll see you at your house. We'll murder you. Like, okay, the guillotine line and Jesus would have shot people. <laughs> Fine, but like the literal, like at the end, like how can you not control it? But these people are so dysregulated. At the end, you just <laughs> will murder you. Like that's the one thing you can't say to these morons. They're all pathetic. They're from Bakersfield, California. They don't care about rules or anything else. But just like right at the end, just don't say we'll murder you, you idiot. Anyway, she uh, obviously had a little twist of emotions when she got arrested, so that's nice to see, and we should start doing that with more of these people before they destroy our entire country. If you block a road to an airport, you're also blocking ambulances and a whole bunch more. But they're all over the place, and they're not just in America. Uh, Bill Maher referenced what's going on in Canada, that Canada is now an example of when the left goes too far. Uh, well, here are Islamists and jihadists and Hamas supporters in Toronto bursting into applause after hearing that Iran attacked Israel over the weekend. Oh, Canada, chants of God is great in Arabic as Iran attacks Israel. Of course, these are the same people who will cry like little bitches when Israel decides to retaliate, which they will at some point. But anyway, now let's get to uh, what happened in the Middle East over the weekend, because it's obviously deeply, like it's all just kind of happening right now, guys. And and I don't, I think that for all the people that were like, oh my God, this was the beginning of World War III, I, I actually don't think that's right. I think we saw a, an interesting realignment over the last couple of days, especially in, in the defense, George, well, we'll get to it in just a sec. Let me talk to you about preserved gold and, we'll, and then we'll get there. Uh, guys, a new central bank digital currency is coming and could replace your dollars with digital currency. With it could come surveillance of our lives, freezing of our assets and government control over our bank accounts and how we spend our money. Americans who want to protect their liberty and privacy need to prepare themselves for what's to come. That's why many Americans are turning to physical gold and silver to diversify their wealth. If you want to help protect your retirement, I recommend you request your free investment guide for my friends over at Preserve Gold today. They'll explore the right options for you and will help you with the process to have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA, 401k, or other qualified retirement account. And they make it easy. They're triple B accredited with zero consumer complaints and hundreds of satisfied clients. They're also a founding member of the Precious Metals Association, so you know you're in good hands. And as an exclusive offer for the Rubin Report viewers, they'll give you up to $10,000 in free gold and silver 
with a qualified purchase or retirement account rollover. They'll even throw in an immediate 500 account credit if you request your investor guide today. So don't wait, visit preservegold.com slash Dave to get your free gold and silver investment guide and take the first step towards protecting your wealth. Again, that's preservegold.com slash Dave to get your free guide from the good people at Preserve Gold. And now back to me. I, I'm sorry, I was about to crack up through that thing because just, just <laughs> we're gonna murder you, <laughs> lady. Uh, all right, so what happened over the weekend? Yeah, Iran, which has been attacking Israel for months and months and months via Hezbollah in Lebanon because Lebanon is a failed state. Uh, and Hezbollah has basically taken over. They actually started rockets and drones from their actual, from Iran itself. We've got some info from the Daily Wire. The Islamic Republic of Iran launched a drone attack against Israel on Saturday in response to Israel killing a top Iranian general who allegedly played a key role in Hamas's October 7th terrorist attack. Israeli officials said that it'll take several hours before the drones are able to reach Israel and given the defensive assets that Israel and the United States have deployed, there is a strong likelihood that most, if not all drones, will be shot down. U.S. officials originally estimated that, that 50 to 75 one-way suicide drones were launched, but that number now appears to be well over 100 as officials believe that a combination of 400 to 500 drones and missiles are being launched at Israel from several countries where Iran has terrorist proxy groups. The majority of the munitions are being launched directly from Iranian soil. So, I'm sure most of you know this now in that World War III did not start over the weekend. Israel and America and I believe France and the UK and a whole bunch of other countries uh, coordinated to shoot down all of the rockets, all of the drones. Some of them exploded and made it into Israel. Some of them exploded and made it into Jordan. Jordan opened up its airspace to Israel. Uh, Egypt had to close its airspace. So there was a real shift in what was going on in the Middle East over the weekend, and it could have sparked World War III, right? A couple of those things get through. They hit something sensitive in Israel. Israel has to do what it must to survive. Anything could have happened. Uh, but thankfully, there is something called the Iron Dome. The Iron Dome is, is a freaking technological miracle that Israel uses to shoot rockets and drones out of the sky. They've been using it for a couple of years now. Uh, and I thought an interesting way to sort of get into the segment would just flash back three years because uh, three years ago, here is Congresswoman AOC literally crying when Congress voted to fund the Iron Dome system. When the House of Ms. Lawson will vote nay on, on House Resident 483 amendments. He votes nay. Yeah, so there she is crying about it. Now, now, what's interesting is the Iron Dome, not only does it save Israeli lives, so it's saving Jewish lives, and it's also, there are two million Muslims that live in Israel, it's saving their lives. There were rockets that were going over Jerusalem, over the Temple Mount, over the Dome of the Rock, Al-Aqsa Mosque. Like, it could have blown up any of those things. So Israel, the Iron Dome is also saving those holy sites. That's important. But the other part is it's saving lives literally of people in Iran because if all of those rockets, let's say those 400 or so rockets and suicide drones and everything else, let's say they hit Israel, Israel has to launch a crazy counterattack, right? So it's saving lives on both sides, but AOC is not that bright, thus she was crying. Uh, anyway, I wanna show you something uh, over from the televised mental institution known as MSNBC because every now and again, they bring on a guest who makes some sense. They had former Israeli ambassador Michael Oren on uh, and here he explains a little bit of what's been going on in the region for the last uh, three decades or so. What's your assessment of where things stand? Just how close are we to war between Israel and Iran? Well, we're not close, Anna, because Israel and Iran have been at war for about 30 years now. Uh, and you can't sort of take out of the context the events of the last week. Uh, Iran and its proxies have been attacking Israel on virtually every border, uh, certainly since October 7th, but well, well before that for decades. Um, and we tend, both the United States and Israel, played by Iran's rules. Iran fires rockets by its proxies, Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, the Shiite militias in Iraq uh, and Syria. They fired Israelis, they fired American troops, and, and we fire back at the proxies, but no one ever fires back at Iran. So it looks now like the rules of the game are changing, that Iran will not be able to uh, escape unscathed uh, from these recurrent battles in this 30-year war between Israel and Iran. And Israeli leaders are thinking now tonight, yes, last night was immensely uh, successful and a, and a great act of cooperation between Israel and the United States and other allies in preventing this onslaught of missiles. But a defense is not deterrence. And if anything, uh, the Iranians are going to be very, very frustrated. 
uh, that they were unable to present to penetrate Israel's defenses, and they're going to try it again because they haven't been deterred in any meaningful way. So the end there, defense is not deterrence. That really is how we can connect this to more broadly what's going on in America. And we'll talk about Biden himself, his response to some of this, and, and Trump in a few minutes. But defense is not deterrence. You can't, it, was it a win? What, what, what happened over the weekend, is it a win? In that Israel wasn't destroyed or largely wounded, so they didn't have to launch and try to destroy, launch rockets and try to destroy Iran, and thus sparking a potential World War III situation. Yes, that didn't happen, so that is a win. But until you deter people from coming again, right? Speak softly and carry a big stick. Make sure that the other guy knows, boy, if they lash out at us, we're gonna get our ass whooped. That's sensible foreign policy. Uh, but what's interesting is over the weekend, there were a lot of people online that are not particularly political people that were just, something happened where it seemed like, oh, people can make sense of this. They can actually just cleanly make sense of this. I wanna show you this one from Dave Portnoy over at Barstool Sports. This is not a particularly political guy. He's a, he's a sports guy and a culture war guy, but he wrote something that I thought was just quite on point that I think most people see. There is no country that is consistently attacked by their enemies and then told to use restraint when defending themselves despite superior military more than Israel. I want peace for all innocents in the Middle East. I also fully support Israel's right to exist and defend itself. And, and that's just on point. I actually retweeted that and I added uh, a little bit more. I said, no other country in the world would accept one single rocket fired into its territory. Jews are told to feed the people raping their women and killing their children enough. Both of those went uh, super, super viral. And I think people just get that. If you shoot a rocket into Canada, Canada has a right to defend itself. If we shoot a rocket into Mexico, Mexico has a right to defend itself. And there's only one country that's supposed to get hundreds and thousands of rockets into its, uh, into its territory, have its women raped and kidnapped and all of the rest of it, and just be told, could you, just, could you feed those people and ease up on the response? Come on. Anyway, Trump on Truth Social made it pretty simple. America supports Israel. That's it, capital letters, simple, clear. And now I wanna contrast that with a little bit of what's going on with the current administration because it is our administration's weakness that did this. No one wants World War III, no one wants boots on the ground, no one wants American troops in harm's way or anything else. I personally believe that America having some role in the world is good because we're basically a pretty good nation, contrary to what people in Dearborn, Michigan and Democrats in Congress think. Uh, but here is Corinne Jean-Pierre over the last couple of days. This is just a little moment she had in the midst of what could have been the beginning of World War III. Here she is uh, with some colleagues in the congressional uh, press room. This is something. They are singing the theme song to a different world, which for those of you of a certain age, you'll remember that was a spinoff of The Cosby Show, uh, where Denise, the oldest, I think she was the oldest daughter, or the second oldest daughter, went to uh, Hillsdale College, Hill, Hillman University. What college? Different world. Where did it take place? Hill, Hill something college. Hillstone? That's a restaurant. Hill, Hillsdale, Hill, Hillman. Hillman. I think it was Hillman College. Hill what? Hill Sloan? Song. Hillsong College, I think it was Hillman College. But in any event, they're singing theme songs from 80s sitcoms over there at the White House, that's just great. And before we get to more of the specific response from Joe Biden, uh, many people were thinking, okay, well, at least we have good generals in charge of things right now. So it's like, at least, you know, even if Joe Biden is sleeping or tired or confused, at least the generals in charge of the army would be aware enough to deal with this threat, right? I mean, uh, we don't have people that maybe don't have their eye on the ball. And I, I wanna understand white rage, and I'm white, and I wanna understand it. So what is it that caused thousands of people to assault this building and try to overturn the Constitution of the United States of America? What caused that? I wanna find that out. I wanna maintain an open mind here, and I do wanna analyze it. It's important that we understand that, because our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and guardians, they come from the American people. So it is important that the leaders now and in the future, do understand it. 
Okay, so you saw what we did right there. Of course, the, gov the government and the military has gone largely woke and we're focused more on genitals and white rage and all this other nonsense. Of course, the other thing that we did was weeks before October 7th, we gave Iran uh, $6 billion. And you remember, we covered it on the show. Uh, they were talking about how, well, you know, we're gonna give them the money and we hope that they won't do bad things with it, but money is fungible and who knows what's gonna happen. Here's White House spokesman John Kirby, then and now. The U.S. will have visibility and will be able to engage in oversight about where the money was going and for what purpose. If Iran tries to divert the funds, we'll take action and we'll lock them up again. And there will be sufficient oversight to make sure that the request is valid and that it's going through uh, uh, vendors who we, who we and the cutteries can trust will actually contract for the goods, the medical equipment, the food, whatever it is. Mm. The regime doesn't get to touch the money, Peter. Doesn't go to them. They don't get to, the, they don't get to decide uh, ultimate destination, uh, and, uh, and they have no direct access to it. Um, John, Iran made two transactions withdrawing from the previously frozen funds in Oman, what were those transactions for? I don't have the details on that, Jackie. You're gonna have to let me get back to you on that. Okay, um... How would I know what they did with the money? But did you catch the date on that first video there? September 13th, 2023. So it's about two and a half weeks before October 7th. So Iran gets the money and then boom, the whole world is flipped on its head. And then, uh, you know, a few months later, it's like, well, who knows what they're doing with the money? And well, oh, this is all very confusing. Here's John Kirby on Iran's attack on Israel over the weekend, and listen to the strength that the, these people have. This, these are the people you really want in charge. But we're trying to help people really understand all of the dynamics here. Yeah. So let me just start with the Israeli war cabinet meeting, which is uh, is ongoing right now. They're discussing a response to the attack. We haven't heard what they're going to say. I did just quote the Israeli defense minister from last night. It seems like from the reporting, the ideal is to, of course, de-escalate here, de-escalate the tensions here. There's already a lot going on in the region. Is the hope from the United States, even as Israel will make their own decisions, that they don't do a retaliatory strike? Well, the hope is that we can de-escalate the tensions. That's really what uh, the president's been trying to do, Jen. And oh, well, we just hope. We hope that we can de-escalate. First off, just her, her question, the loadedness with the question, we all want to de-escalate. Okay, well, again, deterrence deterrence. Sometimes you de-escalate by doing some crazy shit, like dropping the mother of all bombs. Remember when Donald Trump did that, the MOAB? And then people are like, boy, this Donald Trump guy's kind of crazy. And then we had quiet in the Middle East. Uh, but instead we get these mealy mouth people who give money to our enemies, who just hope that good things will happen. And then when old Joe Biden, who has dementia and his diversity hire VP, when they say things, nobody cares. How do I know that? Well, here is old Joe and Kamala uh, just a few days before Iran did this attack. Yeah. Mr. President, what is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Are American personnel at that risk? There's limited fighting already on the northern Israeli border, and I wonder what is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. Don't, don't, don't. And what's the message to Iran? Don't. As President Biden said, just don't. Exactly. One word. Pretty straightforward. But they did. They did. They sent about 500 rockets and suicide drones and a bunch of other stuff. And they've been attacking Israel every day via the North, Hezbollah, but they did. So the point is, again, you, I don't want war in the Middle East. I don't want anyone killed. I don't want World War III. I don't want any of those things. But the weakness, the fecklessness of these people don't. And then, well, she says it very seriously, don't. Well, okay, they did. So now what, lady? You guys just made everything worse. You might be wondering where they came up with that slogan, don't. I think we found the original source. This is wild. Don't. Don't. Just something quick like that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. Don't. Stop it. That was Pineapple Express. I've never seen it, but my people said, it's a good one. It's a good one. All right. Very good. 
Okay, so uh, what would a more sane policy be? Would it be better perhaps to have a certain orange man with funny hair in charge right now? Uh, because when he was in charge, we not only had peace in the Middle East, but we had expanding peace, meaning there were peace deals ready to lay out. Even the Saudi Arabians over the last couple of days have now admitted that they think Hamas launched October 7th because they were about to sign the peace deal with Israel. That was because of Donald Trump. Uh, anyway, here is Trump on uh, what's going on right now. What's going on with Israel, October 7th, and what's going on with Israel could end up in a world war. We have a president that can't put two sentences together. We have a president that can't find the stairs off a stage. We have a president that doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And we could end up in a world war. You know, we have just a little bit less than seven months now, months before November 5th. But that's an eternity when people are incompetent. He's completely right, he's completely right. And I wanna show you another one from Trump because you know there's always video of Trump getting things right years later. They tell him he's a racist and a moron and a blowhard and blah, blah, blah. And then you just have to wait a little while and usually he's right about the big things. Uh, check this out, this is Trump in 2020. They're all dreaming. They're all dreaming of Joe Biden. I'll tell you who's dreaming about him is Iran. If we win and when we win, we are going to have a deal with Iran immediately. They're just waiting, hoping that Biden and now Iran, hey, Iran, don't. And it means nothing. Iran heard don't, and then they said do, right? That's exactly where we are at. That is absolutely where we are at because of our weakness. And again, being strong and, and saying what you mean and having red lines and making sure they aren't crossed, that is what keeps the peace. It is weakness that allows evil to spread. Uh, the end wokeness account on Twitter that we show you a lot of stuff from, uh, they had a I thought this sort of was a good juxtaposition things. At the Middle East in 2020, incredible peace deals being signed, right, with the UAE, with Morocco, a bunch of other countries, uh, Saudi Arabia was on the way. And in 2024, 500 suicide drones on their way from Iran to Israel. Um, thought maybe we'd show you a little reverse of that. Uh, because one of the things that the Democrats are really good at, that leftists are really, really good at is, and we illustrated this earlier with Marr, is that they will just scare the shit out of you about the other guy. So Marr earlier when he was like, the left gets all of these things wrong. And then the last sentence is, but the right might bring in somebody scarier. Uh, here is Joe Biden uh, during the last campaign predicting what would happen if Trump remained president. How many of you Today, our concern, there's, a, for the first time in your career, a genuine possibility of a nuclear war. You said yesterday, you've said it again now, it's dangerous that the United States has never been this close, as close as it is now, to nuclear war. This is not a business deal. This is not who builds the next skyscraper. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. I don't know what it would have done when this president almost started a full-blown war with Iran. So who, who do you think is more right? Who do you think Iran fears more? Who do you think would set a little bit more order into the world? Like, it is obvious, it is obvious, and again, because there seems to be a lot of confusion on the right that if we just don't do anything, if we bury our heads in the sand, if we have nothing to do with the world or anything else, that like things will just kind of work themselves out or bad people will go away, or they won't want anything to do with us. But we're illustrating that they're not only in our borders right now, but they don't respect, don't, don't. So let's go full circle here, because the people who don't want this war are the people who voted for the leaders causing this war. Everyone doesn't want the war, but the people voting the people in are very confused about everything. So I wanna show you a little interaction on Twitter, it doesn't even matter the specifics of the, the two people who are involved here, but I thought it illustrates like the, the dichotomy or the disconnect, let's say, between voting for Democrats and the results that you get with Democrats. So the first tweet here is from a guy named Brian Krasenstein. Check this out, breaking. The Pentagon confirms that Israel is officially under attack by Iran. Let's pray this doesn't escalate to World War III. This would be the first direct attack by Iran on Israel, pray for the world. Now he's mostly a lefty, this guy. It doesn't, you don't have to even know too much about him. Then another account on Twitter wrote this in response. Bad hombre said, this is what you voted for. And Krasenstein said, what the F are you talking about? And hombre wrote this, and this just illustrates the disconnect. 
I did not stutter. You voted for Joe Biden. You voted for the same foreign policy that the US uh, involved in seven conflicts under Obama. You voted against Trump's peace through strength. This is what you wanted. So again, this is this slow motion conservative thing, right? Like you guys gotta get there. You gotta get there or they will be chanting death to America in America. They will be shutting down our airports. We're gonna have rockets flying all over the Middle East and eventually rockets and suicide bombings and everything else will come to our shores, obviously, right? It's peace through strength. Ronald Reagan, Winston Churchill, like this isn't, you don't have to run a lot of tests on this stuff. So the choice is yours, right? Like the choice really is yours. I wanna flash back to an abbreviated version of what Bill Maher was talking about is happening in Dearborn, Michigan right now. And let's really think, do we want this scaled out through the rest of the country? Okay, so that's where we are. Now can I talk about American propaganda? Because there was a rally in Dearborn, Michigan, mm -hmm. to large Muslim population. Uh, chant of death to America. I feel like we've, we've passed something here. You know, I mean, the left has gotten mad at me for many years for talking about Islam. I try not to do it too much because I know it makes them go crazy and I've made my point. But it needs to be talked about now. When you start chanting death to America in America, I mean, I got it, Charlottesville was real bad when they were chanting death to the, what was it, Jews will not replace us. But on American soil, he would say to pour all your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Yeah, I heard this before. Not coming from America, but the great chastisement. We will chastise the infidels. But now it's coming from inside America. Sorry, got to talk about this again. He said, we live in one of the rottenest countries that ever existed on Earth. It's not just genocide, Joe, that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. No, it doesn't. I like our system. This is America, to crying out loud. Well, what about... And there are people who see me say, this, oh, he's a conservative now. I'm a conservative. I have not changed. I always liked America and thought death to it was bad. Well, how about... But, Bill, might I reiterate that defending your liberal values is now a conservative position. You want to live in the America that Republicans are trying to defend. You can't be upset that people are chanting death to America on the streets of America and will not be too thrilled with a uh, leftist atheist uh, if you keep voting for the people that are allowing all of this to happen. So the choice is yours. Like either we will stop voting for these people and maybe fix things or we will not. But I personally don't want any more of this. And this is why Imam Khomeini, who declared the International Day of Quds, this is why he would say to pour all of your all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. You guys are all horrible human beings and Jesus probably would have killed you himself. And I hope one day somebody brings the guillotine and kills all of you mother We'll see you at your house. We'll murder you. I like that chick. You know what I mean? Like I've criticized these people a lot, but like she really, she's special. Um, you guys get the point. 10 years ago in Europe when they had the embers of just the beginnings of we're gonna take down our country and people chanting for ISIS and all of these things, they wish they would have done more because it, they are screwed. They are screwed. We are not as screwed. So we better start voting the right way. We better start doing the right thing. So since I would rather not have that, what would I rather have? I'd rather have more people like UFC lightweight uh, champ Renato Morciano. Uh, check this, this out. He won a big fight over the weekend. And this is the America that I want to live in. I am a huge advocate of the First Amendment. Amendment. And first of all, I love America. I love the Constitution. I love the First Amendment. I can. I want to carry an arm for us. I love private property. And let me tell you something. If you care about your country, I'll read Ludwig von Mises and the six lessons of the Austrian economic school, mother. 
And that's the Moicano, ladies and gentlemen, killing it. That's what I'm talking about. That is literally me in front of the mirror every day before we do the show. That's exactly what I say. You guys get the point. The roads have never been more divergent. They've never been more obvious. And the choice is yours. And we have got to save this freaking country. Larry Elder, my friend, we've got a country to save. You damn well are right. Guys, my full interview with RFK Jr., who offers an alternative. Uh, well, I talk about two roads. There could be a third road. He's got to get on all the ballots. Who knows? Uh, but either way, uh, it was a great conversation. That's available on all platforms, fully ad-free on Locals right now. We've got a post-game show in about 30 seconds at rubenreport.locals.com, people of the internet, live at 1 p.m. And we leave you with a little more from the UFC. I like this guy. Enjoy. Ciao. It's, it's in the beginning of the fight, it looked like he hurt you with the body kick, but you got right on no him. No body kick hurt me. My name is Monty F Moicano. I'm the best lightweight in the world. I lost to Jose Aldo on the featherweight, but right now I can't afford to lose because I have a family to feed. I have dreams to fulfill, and I'm not going to stop until I have the belt. And pay-per-view, boys, UFC, you need to respect me. I am the best in the business. And I'm going to show you guys, Jalen Turner, tough guy, huge guy, very good striker. But I cannot afford to lose.